안녕하세요. Good afternoon here. Good morning in Atlantic time band and good evening or night in Pacific time bands. <laughs> I am Duan Be and I'm, I'm honored to chair this plenary session. First, I would like to welcome you to ICSI 2020 once again. As Greg mentioned uh, in the opening session yesterday, we have record high participants this year. And also there are many more people watching live stream the ICSI 2020. Although we have not counted all the participants yet, I'm certain that there are a lot of people participating in all over the world who are interested in software engineering. While preparing ICSI 2020, I also found that there are so many people who are willing to make contributions to ICSI in various ways. I believe it is a really important and po positive message for the future of software engineering community. I'm lucky to have worked with many energetic and devoted committee members, including many students working as live team members and student volunteers without their sacrifice and devotion, ICSI 2020 would not be possible. I really appreciate their effort. We also know that you might have experienced some inconveniences and difficulties while registering and attending the conference as session chairs, presenters, and audience. Probably we could do better if we had more time to prepare. I would like to apologize for mistake and any inconvenience caused to you. Now, I'm very excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Chan Mo Park. Let me just briefly introduce him. Dr. Chan Mo Park was the fourth year president of Pohang University of Science and Technology. Dr. Dr. Park also served as a special advisor on science and technology uh, to the president of Republic of Korea, and then has become a trans chancellor at the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology in DPRK since 2010. He received many awards and medals. Among them, I just picked one. Dr. Park was awarded by Republic of Korea with the blue, the stripes order of service merit for his contributions on IT development in Korea and collaboration with DPRK. Actually, Dr. Park arrived in South Korea about 15 days ago and had been in self-quarantine for two weeks and arrived at KAIST yesterday. Please welcome Dr. Chammo Park with a warm round of the applause, who will give a title, a talk titled ICT Manpower Development and Software Technologies in DPRK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Pei. And I would like to express my sincere appreciation to organizing committee of ICSI, I normally call ICSE 2020. It is my great honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, I have been to North Korea since uh, September of 2000, so for 2000, uh, for 17 years, I went there to collaborate with the Pyongyang Informatics Center for seven years. Then after Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, PUST was established in 2009 and the students came in 2010. I was teaching there every semester, so stayed six months every year until 2017 when US government prohibited US citizens going there. Today, I would like to talk about ICT manpower development and the software technology in DPRK. The, this is my contents. Recent changes in DPRK, which many people do not know how life in North Korea is or how academics in North Korea. So I would like to uh, show a little bit of changes in DPRK. 
and national policies on science and technology and ICT. ICT manpower development, software technology development, and the overview of Pyongyang University of Science, Technology, and its globalization efforts to make world peace and reunification of Korea, then conclusion. Well, uh, when I went to Pyongyang first time in September 2000 and going there for seven years for the joint research with the Pyongyang Informatics Center, uh, it was the so-called hermit country, so very strict to the foreigners and the, the printers and the phones for the domestic people were restricted because they can use them for propaganda against the government. <laughs> so if you go to the uh, computer store, you can buy a computer, but no printers. And, but after 2010, the Kim Jong-il was uh, trying to make their country a little bit globalized. And also because of the economy, the Changmadang, which is a free market was spreading. So uh, it was being changed, especially in Najin Tombong area it's uh, more it's, uh, about 70 percent people are in market economy rather than their planned economy anyway uh, you will see those things in detail in the uh, youtube or in the file later on so i will mostly go over with the pictures i took most of the pictures are what i took there Anyway, uh, for the foreigners uh, at the beginning, we were not allowed to use mobile phones, but since 2013, we can use mobile phones now. And not only the mobile phones for photograph or telephone, but also internet. So at the beginning of 2000, they were very strict checking our photos and the videos, what I took. And they are cutting with the scissors what they don't like. But now it's of no use because the foreigners, they take a picture and send through the internet to their destination, then erase it. So by the time they check, it was um, the photos and the videos are all gone. Also, I was surprised one time in old days, uh, in 2001, whenever I go to Pyongyang, I have to carry my luggage to China, either Beijing or Shenyang, and uh, you know, check in there. But one time when I went to Kimpo Airport, they said, oh, are you going to, aren't you going to all the way to Pyongyang? So I said, yes. I don't know how they found out because uh, I was just saying to Beijing. So then they said, oh, you can check in all the way to Pyongyang. So first I didn't believe it. So I told the you know, lady, can I talk to your manager? Because uh, if I lose my luggage, then it will be trouble because of all the books and the teaching materials there. But it was true. Anyway, so a lot of changes. Now this is what Kim Jong Il wrote said, "Put your feet on your land, but see the world." So in all the days, they wouldn't even import any high technology from foreign country. But now they are allowed to, you know, import high technology. Also. The terminologies in old days, you are not supposed to use hardware, changchigisu, but now they all say hardware. Uh, this uh, picture is not you know what I took, but I borrowed from OECD uh, 
the report uh, just uh, about a month ago. Uh, it was on web. And the Changmadang in whole countries about 400 in 2016. Uh, now it's more than that. And in Pyongyang, there are about 30 of them. And uh, this one, Unification Street Market, that's Tongilgori Shijang. That's what we are going twice every week to buy something. And, but one thing is, you cannot take any pictures there because uh, inside that uh, market, they are mostly coming from, you know, rural side of the Pyongyang and uh, they're the closes and sometimes they fight each other <laughs> really so bad. Also, other changes is 2013 when I, you know, landed in Pyongyang airport, they were advertising 3G mobile. Now they have a 4, 4G, not 5G at all, but 4G. And uh, this is uh, my mobile phone I brought here in case you are interested in. And also in old days, they did not allow us to take any picture in subway station, even steel pictures. But now, as you see over here, oh, could you turn off this light? Maybe it will be a little better, no? Anyway, uh, Professor Song of Post was taking with his iPad video and people, you know, uh, North Korean people were wondering what he's doing with the uh, iPad. Also, we could, we are foreigners are allowed to meet the local people. So this is at the Myoyang San on the uh, May Day holiday. And this family was having family party and uh, Professor Chu and I joined them. And uh, Professor the Andrew Camp, he is a very young person and uh, most Korean children likes to play, you know, roller skating with them. It was in 2013, March of 2013, maybe you did not remember, but that time, the situation in North Korea was so bad. And uh, always they were saying there may be war between North and the South. And the Chinese TVs was saying the arrow is on the string. So if they, you know, release the hand, there will be war. That was, uh, and the uh, old diplomats in Pyongyang should go back to their own country by April 15. But so in South Korea, United States, you know, they were so worried. However, inside the Pyongyang, it was like this one. No feeling of the war. The academic cooperation they did in 2000 and so on, with mostly with the communist nations, and they did not invite high-tech people or high tech people did not come. But now they invite Western scholars, including, you know, the United States in, in the area of emerging technology and medicine. And the president of AAAS, everybody knows AAAS, right? The, the, that time, Peter Agre was the president. He was invited, Google chairman. The Eric Schmidt was invited to North Korea and, uh, you know, Nobel laureate of Europe, they invited so on. And uh, the, in 2000, when I went to the PIC, China Informatics Center, their computer was uh, just a Pentium 3 type, but now they have many computers, desktop and notebooks like Nova, Hewlett Packard, Acer, um, most scientists, they like Dell most in North Korea. Those are three uh, Nobel laureates from United Kingdom. 
from Notre Dame, Israel. Matter of fact, at that time, Peter Agre from USA, USA was also invited, but he had an operation, so he could not come. And uh, when they came, <coughs> came the end of April, uh, first uh, they saw the future scientist street, that's in Vire Kwakjagari, and Mangyongde Children's Palace. Then they attended the 70th anniversary ceremony of uh, Kim Il Sung University. So they were invited to attend that one. But at that time, Three universities were chosen by North Korea, Kim Il-sung University, KUT's Kim Chek University of Technology, so-called MIT of North Korea. Kim Il-sung University is uh, like uh, Harvard or, you know, and keynote speak, oh, the first. So first was, uh, became again famous because uh, um, Nobel laureates went to first. Here are three uh, Nobel laureates from UK, from Norway, from Israel. And uh, this is uh, uh, Professor Aaron uh, Chernobyl came to post. And these are our graduate students. And uh, he's a uh, professor in agriculture and life science, uh, Professor Cole. Uh, also, the computers uh, they were so selling at the PIC was mostly Pentium 3 type. And this is a price uh, like a 2725 won. At that time, $1 was a 2 won. So this is so about, to, you know, $1,036 uh, dollars so won. Now, one dollar is 101 in North Korea. But that is the official one. If you go to the market, one dollar is 8,001. Can you imagine that? 80 times of official. Now, this is Busong store has a lot of computers. So the first professors, when they need the computers, they go there. like. Uh, Curie Picard, Lenovo, you know, so on. And as you see over here, Acer with Core i7, and price is $1,190. It's a little bit more expensive than uh, South Korea, but still cheaper. Why? They are all made in China, and they, give warranty of just one year. One year warranty is a real uh, product. If it is, uh, you, you know, so-called uh, the modopum, uh, only three months for the warranty. So, <laughs> the Kim Jong-un was trying to uh, get some, you know, gain some popularity among the scientists. So he completed the UNA Scientist Street. That is for the defense research people. Then the satellite for the residents of the satellite scientists. He also completed the resident apartments. And the future scientist street, that's is also called the Tan, meaning Pyongyang, Manhattan. Why? Because uh, near the, you know, Taedong River, like uh, Manhattan is uh, near the Hudson River. <laughs> so they call Pyongyang. As you see, every year he completed the construction of uh, some big buildings. And uh, in 2016, Science Tech Complex and uh, 2017, Liamyong Street near the Kim Il Sung University. So this is a picture of when you show the slide of Hejan picture. First, I thought it looked like very much similar to, you know, this Pyongyang Street. Well, by the way, these two buildings over here, they are 
residents for the Kim Chae University professors. This is a sci tech complex. I thought to this uh, at the beginning, I thought it was uh, like a convention center, but I was wrong. And uh, this one over here is a hotel for the scientists, but only domestic scientists can go in, no foreign scientists. And it's free of charge. Everything was free. And uh, any citizens could go into inside of a side tag. But, and these computers, not only to use for a small project, but also they can use these computers to take distance education from like a Kim Chang University or Kim Il Sung University or other university. And uh, this is made by Ulim uh, company and uh, it's uh, North Korea made. Now, this one over here is the Kasang Yenchi, Kasang Kwak Shilom Shil. So, since uh, my field, major field, is uh, virtual reality, uh, I wanted to see inside. First, they said, Oh, we cannot show you. Why? Because we are so shameful, because they did not have you know, much equipment. So, what they did, that, uh, but anyway, I went in there. What they are doing is the simulation rather than using real virtual reality. For example, to make uh, some, you know, cuisine that you can select uh, some of the ingredients, then the, you give uh, how many grams, uh, so on, then make it, then it will evaluate whether it's good or not. And if it is not, you have to return and, you know, iterate. Now they are using VR as you will see a little bit later. The Ryamyong uh, Street was recently finished. And over here, the, I want to show you this uh, apartment. On the veranda of apartment, you will see solar panels. Every apartment has a solar panel. So in North Korea, all the street lights, they are you know, activated by solar panels. Of course, they are all coming from China. See, if it could come from South Korea, then it will be much cheaper and better. But the South Korea has uh, made of Oisa Chochi, so you cannot sell to North Korea. And uh, here is the 70 uh, floor building too. Well, the big change was in 2018 with the Pyeongchang Olympics. Anyway, uh, here, you have seen those pictures many times on newspaper. I went to Pakistan twice, but twice the weather was so bad. But Moon Jae-in was so lucky. He went just the first time and the weather was so good. Um, this is the seen at the Hanoi, this was Singapore. Singapore, it was really, we were excited because uh, we thought uh, something maybe you know, accomplished, but in Hanoi, everything went to drain uh, because of uh, John Polk. Well, national policy, like uh, in South Korea too, I'm sure uh, I didn't go over South Korean constitution, but the national policies on science and technology in North Korea was based on articles 27 and 51. By the way, you can find this uh, constitution of North Korea on the internet. <clears throat> I don't know, they, I didn't check, but if you go to USA or Japan, no problem. Even over here, I understand you can use a VPN, then you can watch those things. Anyway, Article 27 says technical revolution is vital to the development of the socialist economy by accelerating scientific and the technical development and the technical innovation of the national economy. So the, even from the time Kim Il-sung you know, established their country, they emphasize on science. 
and technology. The Article 51 says the state shall draw up a proper plan for scientific research work, consolidate the creative cooperation between scientists, specialists, and technicians, and produce a message they are no longer. So with the science technology, they would like to put everybody working together. And uh, always they were talking about uh, a uh, great revolution of socialism, ideology, technology, and culture. <clears throat> Three goals was self-reliance, modernization, Hyundai-wa, and the scientification, Kwahaka. And uh, Kim Jong-un recently announced that Jeonmin Kwahak is in Jewa, Kwahak is in Jewa. This one is uh, similar to uh, around the 1970s when I was working with the KAIST. The Korean government says Kwahakwa, Kungmine Kwahakwa. That's the popularization of science. It's a similar to that. So everybody should use science, you know, to their daily life. That's what North Korea is trying to do now. And uh, policies on ICT was established after Kim Il-sung toward the Eastern European countries, the eight countries you see here, Soviet Union, Poland, especially Hungary. And uh, he found out electronics related to high technology is the key to national economic development. So he you know, made contracts with those countries on technical cooperation, especially in the ICT field. And uh, DPRK students sent to those countries, well, they remained there until communist countries collapsed. And uh, massive funding for the information science and the industry during the first three year plan, which was 1988 to 1991. And uh, the, according to the description of this first, you know, the science plan, uh, computer network around the KCC. KCC is uh, the biggest research center on computer, which belongs to Communist Party. Korea sent the computing center, Korea com computer center or computing center. And uh, they were trying to do, promote software industry. And they also, uh, became member of the United Nations. So they kind of tried to get some uh, help. So the science uh, state commission of science and technology, they, this UNDP patent DB project was owned and those, you know, people who are working that project, they said the technical problem was no problem. Real problem was English because they have to write every report in English, and that was the problem. They said, You need all. They asked for $2.4 million to produce 20,000 units of 32 bit pieces. So, you need all people came to North Korea and checked whether they have a capability. Yes, they found out they have a capability, but they also checked South Korea. South Korea was much more advanced than North Korea. So North Korea couldn't get the money. But this one, international, uh, the UNU IST, that's the UN University Interna International Institute of S Software Technology. Uh, they made the memorandum of understanding. And at that time, Professor Dinas Dioruno, he's a technical university of Denmark, this is very well known, the uh, software, you know, the uh, professor. And uh, so uh, the, in that MOU, he said they should invite the DPRK computer scientists to software workshop in Beijing and also to IIST. And it was really, you will see it later, a little bit later. Then, North Korea was emphasizing software sector. Why? Because uh, the 
poor economy and the distribution. Hardware requires a lot of money. Not only that, a lot of distributions like a COCOM, EAR, uh, if you don't know the, the details, these things you can find in internet, no problem. But it's not arrangement and USA and the UN sanctions. So this was uh, at the uh, Beijing in 1993. So I was not invited because uh, that time South Korea was not poor country. They invited only the software scientists in poor country. But I found out uh, they have this one. So I volunteered, I will pay my money. <laughs> and they said, oh, in that case, you can come. So I went there and uh, maybe some, many of you, it's David Greece uh, who wrote it books on compilers, which I used to when I was teaching compiler. And he is a builder. And I invited South Korea, so he could compare North Korea and South Korea. And here is from Kim Chang University. And this guy was from Pyongyang University of Computer Science. And that time, Postec, the Nature Asia, you know, the journal uh, said Postec was doing very well. So he liked the, because I was professor with the Postec. But every day in the morning, his eyes were red. That means he did not sleep. So I said, how come, what are you doing at night time? See, all scientists, they were using the room alone, but only North Korea. He had to stay together with uh, this uh, uh, Kim Chang Un professor. But before he was entering, he said, oh, this guy wanted to learn Chinese. So he was using a uh, Chinese program on the TV. But later on, he came to me. He said he was trying to learn English. So North Korean people these days, even kindergarten children, they are learning English at home, you know. And uh, he was the director of the <coughs> UNESCO Beijing office. He is from North Korea. And uh, he organized uh, this conference to help to, to organize. The international collaboration of the Soviet Union was the first one, then they made the uh, first and the second generation computer, Chanjin 5,500, uh, 5, and uh, Yongnamsan 1, so on. And the Japan Pyongyang Informatics Center and the Osaka Informatics Center, they were working together. Silver Star Joint Venture Company, and also they were mostly Japan, North Korea sympathizers, Cho uh, Chongyan Getong. And Singapore, they had a branch office, PIC had a branch office and uh, marketing software products. And uh, uh, this in Singapore, there was a Comdex Asia, I will show you a picture later on. The public of Korea, uh, especially after Kim Dae-jung met with Kim Jong-il, there were a lot of software development to join three, but Samsung, did even before Kim Dae Jung met in 1990 something, they were trying to you know develop unified software between North Korea and so Samsung approached North Korea very early. And Samcholi uh, Research Center in North Korea with Hanaro, they developed a computer animated cartoon like a Pororo. Aurora became very famous worldwide now. But when it was uh, you know, completed and came out you know, the use in other countries, North Korea did not use, could not use Aurora. Why? Because the background is so luxury. But now, if you go to Pyongyang, the so-called Pyanto, they call popcorn. Uh, anyway, uh, that has uh, Pororo pictures. So Pororo became so famous even in North Korea. 
then means uh, it's uh, opening up a little bit. And the PIC, Pyongyang Information Center, and the POSTEC, uh, we had a joint research for seven years to make uh, um, construction that is uh, a virtual navigation of a building before its construction. And uh, Kim Chang University and the Hanyang University had a collaboration. And uh, the, the South Korea and North Korea, we jointly, this is what I initiated, the International Conference on Computer Processing of Korean Language since 1994, jointly holding Korean Conference on Science and Technology. This was the first time we, we, the science you know, uh, conference was held in North Korea, 2006, in the field of IT, uh, biotech, nanotech, and the environment tech. And uh, USA also does, even now, they do joint research with the North Korea, Pak you know, earthquake. They are doing that one. And also the uh, forest problems. But anyway, Syracuse University and the Kim Tech University, they did a joint research in the field of ICT and English teaching. So this is also what we developed, you know, Postec and the PIC and won the first prize at 13th software competition in Pyongyang. So this is a Tangunnung, Tangunnung. Uh, using the uh, construction one point version 1.0, they design architectures, design then through the virtual uh, the navigation, find out if there is any error and so on. This was a Korean conference on science technology 2005. And here is the uh, agreement. We, when you do something with North Korea, you have to have a written agreement. Otherwise, uh, later on, they change their, you know. So with this one, uh, for one and a half years, I tried so hard um, representing South Korea. Uh, this is from North Korea, and this is from Japan, China, and uh, finally, in November of 2005, we made the agreement. And 2006, April, we had at the Imi Munagungan Desu People's Cultural Palace. And about the 200 you know, scientists attended there from Kim Jong University. From South Korea, 30 people went. And this are, uh, here's a, uh, Stratotoson of Syracuse University and uh, the Shin Tae Song, he is from Pyongyang, uh, Kim Chang University of Technology. They were, this uh, Kim Chang University scientists were going to Syracuse University, staying there sometimes one week, sometimes one month. So even, you know, USA gave a visa to not students, but researchers, they give a visa. However, for the English, uh, technical English, they wanted to, you know, they bring more people. So we did in Beijing. So each session was about two months and uh, several times we did. The manpower development uh, in North Korea, education is the highest priority. So Kim Il-sung, you, you know, established the Kim Il Sung University in 1946. That is uh, one year after the liberation of Korea and two years earlier than founding DPRK. So he implemented the 11 year compulsory education system, but later on, Kim Jong un changed the 12 year compulsory education. That is, uh, uh, one year of kindergarten, five years of primary school, three years. Uh, with the 11, they had four years of primary school, but now they have five years. In South Korea, we have six years, right? Primary school. 
and three years of middle school and three years of high school. So this is similar to Western school system. And, but in North Korea, national education system is divided into three different tracks, special track, that is for the special disciplines, also for the children of revolutionary army members. So-called, well, in South Korea, they have Kumsujo, but these are more powerful than Kumsujo. And the regular track, it's a normal track. And workplace track, that is a Gongjang or factories or farms, fisheries. It's a continuing education, so in the, in the evening time. So anyway, they are making their people to learn all the time, whole their life. And, uh, and they work so hard. So regular track is a, similar to Western system, like 12 years of compulsory college, university, then graduate school. Also, they have extracurricular education. That is, the, after their regular school, they go to Mangyangda school children or Pyongyang school children, and each one has a, like a club. They call, you know, computer sojo. They call sojo, computer sojo, umak sojo, so on. Then they, but that's all free. You are not paying anything. And so computer course was being taught from third grade. Uh, I brought here tablet made in North Korea. This is for the foreign people. This is for the uh, domestic people. This one contains all the textbooks of primary, middle school, high school. And uh, when I saw this one, the third grade of elementary school had a computer course and the English course. So they were teaching English and, but now with the uh, 12 compulsory, they changed it to teach from the fourth grade. Anyway, the big, really biggest uh, accomplishment most Korea did was establishment of secondary school for gifted talents, like a Yongje Hakyo in South Korea. South Korea, Yongje Hakyo started much later than North Korea. So they started in 1984 with Pyongyang Jail Hakyo, and they made only one to kind of experiment whether it will be good or not. So the goal was to achieve a master or PhD degree in their 20s, Egypte, and to foster talents with creativity to make 80% of 1,000 students to major in science and technology, to possess knowledge for college teachers difficult to teach. So they should you know, have knowledge, even college professors difficult to teach and to emphasize the computer and the foreign languages. So this is uh, Mangyang Dahaksing Son and this is a computer in 1995 they're using, but these days they changed it to uh, Achim computer, which is uh, you know, uh, much advanced computers. And so after they found out uh, Pyongyang, the number one school was so successful, they made so many number one schools. So one number one high middle school, each province, each city, each county. And in Pyongyang, each district, there are about nine districts, they change all the time. So, so altogether, they were all 200, altogether, you know, number one, but they found out uh, it was too much because the, if you graduate from number one, you can normally admit you to very prestigious universities, but important thing is they are exempted from military. They don't have to go to military. And in North Korea, if you go to military, male is, you serve 10 years and the female six years. Can you imagine that? That's why those people in North Korea, same thing, you know, the parents, 
they don't want to their children go to military, right? So they try to push to the number one school and uh, go to like Kim Il Sung University, Kim Chang University, or Pyongyang University. So Pyongyang University students, they do not go to military. The establishing classes for computer talent in four high middle schools, such as Kim Sung Number One and Two, and they were training 1,200 computers. I think these students are those who could be become, become very good hackers. So hackers, university, they do not teach you know, to become hacker, but very young uh, they teach. And Kumsang number one and the number two module to Kumsang Academy. Uh, somebody should uh, uh, tell me, you know, if there is over 10 minutes left. So uh, one time, first the professors visited the Kumsang Academy. He was the principal of the Kumsang Academy. And uh, this is called the computer Sujay Yangsong Seo. And uh, we went to fifth grade at that time. Um, the middle school and the high school was not divided. So it was a uh, you know, high middle school for six years. And uh, fifth grade is uh, like a second grade in high school. And we uh, asked what they were learning. They were learning Java. And uh, here is the uh, uh, programming languages or uh, you know other stuff they were learning uh, for six years from the uh, first grade of the high middle school to sixth grade, and I was surprised to see this one uh, AI languages Lisp and Plolo. That was the language I was teaching long time ago at the Catholic University of America. But so I don't think they are teaching this one anymore because uh, so this was a kind of a long time ago. The other changes uh, in ICT, I don't know why, but they changed the course name computer to Chongbo Kisu, uh, information technology. That is more broad rather than just the computer. So then reduce the number one high school from 200 to about 30 now. And uh, the, before this change, the number one high middle school had six grades, right? Three years middle school, three years uh, high school, more or less. But now the number one high school has only three years. So middle school is uh, learning from ordinary middle school. So when you uh, graduate from ordinary middle school, you have to decide whether you can go to number one high school or just ordinary high school. And the programming language uh, taught in number one high school, they will they used to learn, uh, teach Gambas, but now C++, HTML, JavaScript. And uh, this is very recent information. Uh, it's not implemented yet, but Kim Jong-un said for the fourth industrial revolution, you have to generate a lot of ICT technical, you know, high schools. So there will be 190 new high schools. So they are trying to make a lot of uh, manpower specialized in ICT. So this is uh, the content of uh, information technology with the uh, number one high school, very new one. And this information was obtained uh, from one of the uh, person who got masters at the Handong University majoring in this area. He was going, he's a dentist. So he has been going to North Korea many, many times, but he wanted to, you know, do, and he kindly gave me this information. But anyway, uh, grade one of the number one high school, uh, chapter one is information communication, computer structure and the application, 
creating multimedia program. And uh, in grade two, the uh, macros in business processing programs and action script in flash. This one I didn't see in the old, you know, number one. And web documents and HTML documents. Grade three, the senior, programming for real world problems and the creation of web programs using JSP, Java server pages, so on. So, uh, matter of fact, I'm not very familiar with the JSP myself, but must be very useful one. Computer science education in universities are similar to Western country and uh, Kim Il-sung, uh, you know, the in 1985, we established the two new schools, which was Pyongyang University of Computer Technology and the Hamung University of Computer Technology. At the beginning, it was uh, like a college, you know, Jomundia, but now it became university. So anyway, these two universities are strongly, you know, teaching about the ICT. And uh, hooked Pyongyang University of Computer Technology as Faculty of Computer Science, Faculty of Information Technology, and uh, these are the departments. And those graduates from PUCT, they are mostly going IT organizations or graduate school like, uh, you know, Kim Il-sung University or uh, Kim, uh, Kim Chang University or uh, Pyongyang University of Science and Technology. So also they go KCC. When I was working doing the research with the PIC, there were a lot of graduates from PUCT and they are very smart and the science technology centers. But Hamung University of the Computer Technology, uh, which has computer science department from uh, the uh, all those things as, but they are emphasizing robotics and control devices and integrated circuits, so more or less in the hardware area. And they are mostly serving in the army. So if you go to Hamung University of Science Technology, uh, Hamung University of Computer Technology, they are you know, serving in the military. Kim Il-sung University founded the College of Computer Science in 1997. This is in addition to other departments at the Kim Il-sung University and all those things similar to other universities in Western country. And research achievements, they were doing network management, security, modern intelligence information processing based on AI. North Korean people, they are very keen in AI because they are very strong in mathematics. So I will explain later on. And the uh, Korean style OS, like, uh, you know, Purgum Biao. This is the uh, uh, Kim Il-sung University Computer Center in the e-library. And they have a Hewlett Packard, much more than one. The Kim Chang University also founded the College of Information Science and Technology. And, but they train Kim Il Sung University mostly academician, but here mostly special technical talents, so practical problems. And they have Faculty of Information Processing, Faculty of Computer Engineering, and uh, since uh, this is a software engineering you know, conference, I found out uh, this is a little bit long time ago, 2010, uh, Kim University's, the software engineering course syllabus, what they are teaching. Chapter one, concept of software engineering. Chapter two, software requirement. Uh, like Nancy was uh, really trying to emphasize requirements in her, you know, the keynote speech yesterday. I saw that on today, 
on uh, website. And the chapter three, software design, chapter four, software quality and verification, which are normal curriculum in Western universities too. So if you have any comments on those things, maybe you can suggest to them to change your work. <laughs> okay. Also, they are at they KUT Kimcha University adopted the CDIO, that's a conceive design implement operated teaching method. This is uh, in USA widely used, but they changed that on to uh, you know needed in DPRK. You know, it's uh, what is modified original CDIO. They are not in CDIO consortium. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think they even tried to become consortium member. Science University is a very smart guys in Pyeongsang. Pyeongsang is where Academy of Science headquarters is, and they used to post a member of for State Academy of Sciences and. Computer science department is well recognized for its superb fostering of high quality programmers. So this one, Pyong, Pyongyang Teachers Training College now trying to use, utilize virtual reality in education. So, okay, this is a KUT library and uh, uh, the director of uh, Kimcha University was so, you know, kind of uh, felt so bad. They were using Acer, which is a kind of old computer. Uh, Kim, Kimcha University, their library was established later than Kimcha, and they are using Hewlett Packard. Maybe they changed it to better ones now. So, this is the efforts to utilize VR in education. So as I said, when I visited the side tech complex, they did not have any, even, you know, HMD. But now, even the Pyongyang Teachers Training College, they are using HMDs. Because of this HTC Vive, uh, last, uh, two years ago, I came here, as a KAIST, to give a seminar at the ARRC, Wum Tech. And they are also using this HTC survival. You know how much it is for the whole set? $500. That they can afford it, North Korea. However, all the software they are using in North Korea, they are developed in North Korea. So they did not buy software. <laughs> and this was at the uh, international trade show, uh, there is twice every year they are doing. And this is uh, showing the automobile, the driving simulation using, you know, virtual reality. Software technology emphasis on software was, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, because it requires less amount of capital, but good human brain and creativity. And telling the truth, North Korean students have a lot of creativity. Why? Because they work so hard. You know, I've been teaching at the KAIST, teaching at the Postec. Well, when KAIST was established, students worked very hard, but they became lazy. <laughs> Postec, same thing. So when I go to see, students in post-tech, if you guys are so lazy like this one, you will be behind the North Korea because they do not even sleep. They work so hard. And also their hardware tool is so bad, so poor. So what they have to do is try to develop very efficient algorithm to kind of, you know, get the, better the product. So they also 
as I said over here, they they have capability to nurture talented men from instead. In USA, these days, this is STEM, everybody knows STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So they are emphasizing so hard in the USA, but North Korea, they have been emphasizing STEM from the old days. So especially mathematics. When I did the research for ministry, most Ministry of Science and Technology in Korea, I found out the mathematics in, you know, childhood, that's the primary school and secondary school, was about 1.5 to two times of South Korea. Because of mathematics, you don't need too much money. So they tried to overcome, you know, poor hardware with the efficient algorithm. And also they made a national program competition since 1990 and holding every year, even during the March of Suffering, that's the Konane Hengung Shide. So that is, and the first national program, which was held in 1990, had 440 programs. And there were top quality programs on accounting program, but even so, they say the top quality is not so top quality these days, but that time it was top quality for them. And other programming contests for the university students and the high school students, they do, you know, not every year, but from time to time. Just uh, um, the, the funny thing, or unfortunate thing is uh, the, even I'm first uh, professor, I cannot go to see how they are doing high school students or the primary you know, students, uh, university students are doing. The, so level of software technology in DPRPA is uh, similar to that of Western, which was proved by Silver Star Computer Go game, developed in 1997, then won the first you know, prize in global computer Go game. And uh, the, that time they beat the, the British uh, com the Go game and uh, for six four years, they won. They you know won first prize. So they said they were number one before AlphaGo, but now with the AlphaGo, <laughs> they cannot claim they one. So they are doing Changi, you know, chess, Korean chess. So research and development in software technology in early days was uh, the characteristics was. Uh, like word processors and office automation, and like machine translation and so on. Entertainment. So they tried to learning some subject by using games. That's what North Korea you know, doing. You know, like some Charlie uh, doing animation, right? Of those things, they were trying to. So, for example, to teach Brownian movement, they make a game. Uh, to catch a ball, which is uh, bouncing with a Brownian movement, okay? Also, they were doing a lot of uh, antivirus and computer security systems from the early days. So maybe they tried to create a hackers or they wanted to prevent hackers attack. The computerization of Korean medicine this, this field is, uh, North Korea is better than South Korea. You understand the Korean medicine. That is, uh, you know, in South Korea, what do they call? Korea, the Dongbang or, you know, something like that. Simulation system, computer-aided system, um, automatic fingerprint identification. But these days, the recent software technology is uh, emphasizing on CNC. Even they made a song about the CNC. So if you do not know what CNC is, you are not North Korean. That's computer numerical control. And try to use CNC in all the in industry automation. Computer vision, 
system software, like web stuff, uh, remote education, medical business systems, 3D printing, intelligent robot, autonomous vehicle, drone, AI, IoT, VR, big data, cloud. So these are more as a force, <coughs> you know, force revolution, industrial revolution subject. So major software research organization is a DPRK Academy of Sciences, especially computer science department. And uh, uh, so they developed uh, so many uh, programs, then tried to sell through some like a Pexong trading corporation, manpower training in software fields, integration of software technology into economic sectors. So, so table one, this one shows the some of the product by PCS. And over here at the bottom, uh, like a tree floor one, it's a chunk equity one, chunk equity two, chunk equity three. They are mostly entertainment programs. <clears throat> the Korea Computer Center, KCC, uh, was a very famous doing with the Korea architecture, the integrated services, digital medicine, CAD CAM system for textile pattern design, Korean character recognition, so on. So when they do, not only Korean and English, but Japanese, Chinese, Russian character recognition too. And uh, MOHO, this is a uh, wall dressing process for reducing the cost. Dancing fountain, this was uh, one of the successful items. Golden horse, when this was developed uh, in 1990s, I wanted to buy one stand. So in China, I tried to you know, find uh, the a seller, he asked me, $7,000, so no way, I didn't buy. Now, do you know what? South Korea imported this one, and it's $300. The air traffic control system for Pyongyang International Airport, patent database system for UNDP. Pyongyang Informatics Center, which uh, the, the post will be the joint research, DTP system, multilingual word processor, uh, Tangun for the Windows 95, but of course, these days they upgraded this one. And Dangun is a front end processing program. That is, you can do with Dangun Korean input output with English, you know, OS. In South Korea, the Microsoft allowed to develop our own Korean uh, the operating system but they never permitted the North Korea. So what they were had to do for the input output, they had in South Korea, in all the days, uh, there is something, what is that? The Hangul uh, to give input and output in Korean character. There is a, I forgot the name, but, before Korean, the OS came out. Changdeok is a word processor. Uh, so in North Korea, there are two famous ones, Changdeok and Gukyu. Gukyu is a national regulation. So table two shows PIC products at the Comdex Asia exhibition in Singapore. So you can see no, this one has the details of explanation. And the computing center of Kim Il-sung University, they developed many programs in cooperation with the faculties for computer science and natural, the intelligent locker, wall of antivirus, SIMNAS, that's simulation and analysis, HomeSet, that's computer aided teaching system, war game program, hepatitis diagnosis and the prescription system. And the Umbiol, this was uh, what developed that computer Go game. And uh, I know the, the guy who created that uh, Go game and he, you know, 
Uh, so I said, how did you make your program so powerful? He said, they bought a British new game. They did the reverse engineering. Well, 10 minutes, yes. Then they added the AI technique there. That's how they won. Anyway, he's a very smart guy who graduated from Kim Il-sung University. So silver bottle, uh, this is also called in South Korea as a, with a Bugyong bado. I don't know, these days maybe the Oisa Jochi. And now they have a world of silver dangi. And other organization is the information center of Kim Chang University. Uh, this is steganography, I will show you a little bit later. And uh, Pyongyang University of Computer Technology, Korean Medicinal Food and Prescription. And Science University, uh, Motion Translation, Signature Identification, Amnokang Technology Development Company, strong research on automatic fingerprint identification. So they had the first international computer software seminar in Beijing in 2002. So I attended there. And the main purpose was to show DTRK capabilities in software technology and invite global collaborations. So table, oh, this is uh, uh, the scene of the opening. And this guy over here is a colonel of a US military and he was stationed in Japan, but he came all the way to Beijing, he became a good friend of mine. Anyway, so it was kind of successful. And here, the products and which organization, like Kim Il-sung University, six products, Kim Chang University, seven, and steganography was very popular over there, and the KCC, uh, Korean character recognition. And uh, this is steganography. Uh, everybody knows what steganography is, right? So you try to send some information, you know, the concealed in another information. So this is a picture you would like to send. So this is a base picture. You conceal this one, hide this one here, but histogram of this one, with, with this one and without this one is the same. Because if histogram different, then people will be suspecting. Anyway, over here, as you see here, Japanese password. Uh, that means that's collaboration with Japan. So if you give the password, then you will find the considered picture. And here is a PIC. You can see this one right on. This is a gold, and this is practically, I tried to hear, you know, he was the researcher from KCC. Before me, one other lady was uh, uh, trying to this one. Then after she put her hand like this one, this guy just uh, turned off. That means the result was so bad. <laughs> no, what I mean bad is not the, Program is bad, but the person has bad, you know, uh, aptitude of the treasure. So anyway, for me, diagnosis, and here I was surprised. I'm allergic to apple and, you know, peach. Here with uh, the uh, quail you, I'm not, Apple or peach, whatever the analytic did not show up here. So at least for me, and I am uh, so, so uh, young in and so yolda. And this, uh, okay. So this is a CNC machine exhibited in eighth fall. And here is the Yanagige is making CNC. And this guy from Switzerland came interested in buying CNC. And uh, the 25th national program competition over here. And here is uh, important. In 2012, Chosun Exchange Report, which is uh, in Singapore, they reported that 30 million euros per year on export to Europe. So, CNC was 
exporting to Europe, South America, and South Asia. Of course, they are using CNC for military purpose too. And the college students of North Korea, they won so many international you know, coding competition. These are being done online. They do not have to go there in India or the Russia. And uh, so here, Kim Il-sung University, they won you know, the coding competition uh, August, September, and October of 2013. Uh, the uh, same team at the Russia uh, to, to become code forces, so on. So now first uh, is a unique Christian-based private and international global university. And since I don't have much time, I will show you just uh, some, you know, the others you can read. All the courses are taught in English. And this is the campus and uh, this is current status of students, so on. But here are the initially we accepted only male beginning 2015, female, and uh, the older students, they talk in English inside the campus. And first is the only university which has real internet. Other universities, they use intranet, as you know. And this is a graduate ceremony. Oh, and they do not wear a gown in North Korea. And uh, the, the first graduate from the graduate school, uh, eight, 44 graduated, but 18 of them came back. And uh, here are the graduate students I advised the masters. This guy is working for the PhD. This guy went to the PIC. This guy, went to Kim Il-sung University as a lecturer. So in North Korea, if you have a master's, you can be a lecturer, instructor, not professor. And these are professors, and here's the devotion. And the important thing is we are teaching software skills like ethics, virtues, trust, appreciation, and patience. And trying to bridge between North Korea and Western world. So guiding postgraduate contribute to globalize. So, and this is computer science curriculum at first. Uh, the College of you know, ECE has EE, CS, and IA. But robotics, all those things are taught at the industrial automation. Of course, computer science students can go there to take those courses. And all those things appear in PUST.co website. And graduate computer science over here, I have been teaching virtual reality. These days we implement the internet of things. And this is my course syllabus for the uh, virtual reality. Since they did not have a computer graphics, I have to give some, you know, review on interactive computer graphics first, then go into virtual reality and the of course in application uh, i'm not the apply to military just education medicine so on and uh, here are examples of student projects so here's the uh, uh, animation of morambong this is the uh, virtual navigation of uh, the first campus, the virtual model of, uh, you know, total shell, the um, virtual navigation, so on. And uh, these four graduate students who did uh, this uh, hip hop dance uh, animation, now uh, in the final report, they wrote down this, and by learning each things and practicing, we could turn them into capital for future struggles. We, uh, we will make a constant effort to live up to his high expectation. So when professor hear that, they will be doing, you know, uh, to fulfill my expectation. I'm so glad. And uh, the globalization effort is we have every 
other year international conference and uh, the keynote speakers are like Nobel laureate uh, David Elton is uh, Lord of you know House of Lord in Britain so um, and uh, David Kilmers you here, here he went to the space four times then at age 44 he retired from Marine then went to medical school now he is a medical doctor helping North Korea with the TB, you know, tuberculosis, and study abroad. In, and we are trying to send many students to abroad, like uh, University of uh, yeah, the uh, United Kingdom, the Westminster, uh, Cambridge, Oxford, and uh, the Uppsala in Sweden and the uh, in Brazil, Sao Paulo University, so on. And, uh, you know, after they come back, they really become globalized. And those who do not go to the study abroad, they go like uh, trips, you know, cannot for two weeks every uh, year. So here is the uh, international conference, um, Nobel laureate, and uh, talking to our student. And uh, this is second first conference. This is David Hilmers. Uh, third one, third one, we had some Korean, like uh, you know the the Kogon uh, premier, former premier, and. Uh, uh, president of Sungshil University, so on. And this is Cambridge University, this is Westminster. So to go there, the inter the interview is being carried out by Scope, uh, Skype. Sorry. This is a collaboration with INOVA of Brazil, and those two students went to Brazil. And these are the study tree. So Lim Chao, uh, whom I supported, this is a typical example. So what important is he he went to University of West. Let me give you with the picture. This is when this this guy, the smallest guy, uh, went to you know London. Uh, this is when they arrived there. So in two days. Big difference, right? Then next year, January, I went to see their advisors and the dean, and they all said they work so hard. And this is dormitory. When I went to their dormitory, I watched the world first. You understand why I watched the world first, right? No, in North Korea, if you go to dormitory. What wall, what do you see? Even all the classroom at the first, you will see picture of Kim Il sung and Kim Hang. But over here, no pictures. And they do not wear even that. And this Lim Chow gave you know a presentation in front of a Nobel laureates. And so they wrote first of role of a post for a piece of unification. The post is trying to force the globalized manpower and try to act as a bridge between two careers and provide opportunities to collaborate with the UN, EU organizations such as WHO, WFP. In North Korea, in Pyongyang, every Friday, we have an interagency meeting and the post is also a member, yeah. Okay, this is almost done. So this is a conclusion. So DPRK emphasized mathematics and the basic science. Level of software technology is comparable to, you know, uh, advanced countries, but level of hardware and communication is way behind South Korea. Narrowing the gap is very important for peaceful reunification, and the first is trying to foster well-trained ICT professionals with good characters and global mindset. 
Well, the, here are references, and thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Park. So, so, well, that information actually is not even, it's, a, it's brand new to me in South Korea. So I, really, I really appreciate you coming to give thank a you. talk. I have the many questions to, 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 <laughs> yeah. to, to, for you to answer. So let me start with um, the uh, first question, which uh, many people are interested in. The first one is, are there any the open source contributions from DPRK? And then the, uh, the, uh, whether the, uh, there is any access to open source repository in DPRK. Well, they are using a lot of open source from like mostly from USA, but I don't think uh, they generate any open source. Yeah. I see. In the future, maybe. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, so the so second one is uh, like, uh, what is the proportion of women in computer science the area in the research. Oh, well, you mean in overall? Overall. Well, when I was uh, doing uh, doing the research with the PIC, uh, the female researcher was about thirty percent. Thirty percent. Yeah. Wow. Overall, you know, the group, mm -hmm. the VR group I was using um, at the Pyongyang University of Science Technology. The student wise, we have about 15% uh, uh, to female. 15%. 15. 15, yeah. Right. I think it's a good number, good proportion, yeah. yes. Okay. And then the another one um, is there any academic paper published? Oh, yes. The many papers published, uh, not <clears throat> from first, but uh, like a Kim Il Sung University, mm -hmm. so on, in China, in many you know conferences and so on, and uh, there was one published in South Korea. I see. <laughs> the in the field of uh, you know the electrical science or the, the information science. Yeah, I think I heard that before. Yes, right. Yes. I what I that wrote uh, I I read it from the newspaper article. Right. right? Okay, there's another one. How is the situation outside Pyongyang in terms of accessibility to computer and computer science education? Yeah, the, I have a pictures of, uh, you know, <clears throat> many the libraries, like in Chongjin library, there are a lot of computers and they were taking distance education from there and uh, there is a big board showing all the the organizations that's connected. So not all the you know small cities, but like Kim Jong University has about the nine local centers in the like Hejin, Najin, so on. Right. So basically, the outside of Pyongyang, they have the access. They can access computer, you know, oh, yes. and they computer do. science education available. Well, not in their house, but I see in okay. public place. Okay. So the next one is: uh, Do some people from TPRK go to study computer science abroad, and in which countries then? Oh yeah, right. Mostly UK. I see. Sweden. Uh huh. Uh, Switzerland was uh, the internship, and uh, the Brazil. Uh, we have a couple of students admitted in Germany, mm. but university admitted, however, German government didn't like to give a visa I because see. of the pressure from USA. I see. <laughs> okay. So next one is, uh, in what extent are the students allowed for accessing internet? Such as uh, like API documentation, open source projects for learning purpose. Well, at the post, the graduate student, no problem to access. Mm -hmm. Undergraduate, only when they become fourth grade and write their thesis. Uh, but other universities, like Kim Il Sung University, mm -hmm. Kim Chae University, they are ready to open to the student. 
even three years ago, when I talked with the librarian there, they said, oh, we'll open soon because we are all you know, ready, but not yet. still not yet. I see, okay. So well, th there is another one, like uh, do people in DPRK use cryptocurrencies such as uh, Bitcoin, you know? Yes. <laughs> um, even Pyongyang University one semester after U.S. citizens of uh, ProVTV, one European professor went there to teach Bitcoin and he published the, you know, I thought that made us a real problem. And the uh, U.S. government uh, was uh, kind of regret because uh, if we were there, we wouldn't let him to teach Bitcoins or, you know, but uh, I, am, I think uh, they are trying very hard to utilize that technology. Okay. Um, yes, uh, probably this will be the last one. Uh, how do they organize those collaborations with United States? Uh, like, uh, for example, like a Syracuse University. Well, okay. Yeah, well, the Syracuse University, they, the Dr. Stuart Dawson, he approached in 2001 uh, with the Kimcho University. So Kimcho University invited him to come to Syracuse University. Before he went to Syracuse University, uh, the Kimcho University, he visited South Korea and came to see me. That was the first time I met him. Since he heard I was doing joint research with the PIC, uh, he asked, you know, how uh, he should do, what he shouldn't do, what he can do, and so on. Then he went to Kimcho University, met the people, Shin Tae-sung, the director of the computing center, and came back to me after visiting um, Kimcho University. He said, he was so glad to meet me because my advice was really so good for him to accomplish that contract with the Kim Chai University. Okay, thank you. I have the one interesting case that just popped up. <laughs> Let me just make, right. make this one last one. Um, is there any DPRK company I could hire to write software for me? <laughs> well, the problem is the South Korean government wouldn't let you do it. I think the discussion is not from South Korea, but like uh, like uh, the other country. So is it is it possible for any the uh, the uh, software company in TPRK just to write the software for not just the South Korea, but the the, the company in the outside of South Korea? Well, yes, there there are a lot of. Uh, IT professionals in China and Europe. Mm -hmm. And they are doing mostly for the Chinese companies or, you know, for example, France, they are using animators, mm -hmm. the computer graphics, actually. Yes, I see. Yeah. So they are already the North Korean software developers are working together with the uh, other in oh, international yes, companies. Oh, yeah, okay. a lot of them. I see, okay. And uh, the, I forgot, of uh, going to abroad to China is another one. Mm. Yeah, there are that was I see. To China. Okay, so let us uh, give a big applause to the uh, Dr. Park. This is the end of the keynote speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.